Good evening. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Once again, folks, make sure that you have pen and paper by your side because, once again, we're going to talk about something that you need to know and something that also some people are going to find extremely controversial. Be that as it may, we're still going to talk about it. I'm tired. We took the dogs up on top of the mountain today to run and play. So I'm a little bit sore and very tired. So I hope they'll take that into consideration if I make some mistakes tonight. We're going to uh, be discussing British Israelism, known in this country as Christian identity. It is a racist doctrine that proclaims a master race descended from the house of David, actually farther back than that. <laughs> they claim that they are the descendants of Seth and that everybody else in the world are the descendants of Cain. And uh, if you ain't one of them, you ain't nothing. You ain't nobody and they don't want you around. Simple as that. They're racist in everything that they do and say. Although, if you ask them about it, they will tell you that they are racialists. <laughs> and that they really don't have any objections to other races, they just don't want to live with them. And I'm here to tell you, that's the biggest bunch of BS you ever heard in your life. If these people ever came to a position of real power, by real power I mean control, they would destroy anyone who doesn't believe as they believe, who doesn't look like they look, and isn't of their race. Now, I'm not just whistling Dixie here, folks. I've studied these people for a long time. I didn't even really know they existed until I started doing my radio broadcast. And uh, all of a sudden I started getting pamphlets and books and letters of congratulations from these people who all thought for some reason that because I opposed the tyranny of those who would destroy this country, that I was somehow one of them. And when they found out that I was not, that I was part Native American, and that I was married to a Chinese woman, I got baskets full and bushets, bushels full and uh, big boxes full of the most vicious, vile, despicable, uncouth, hate mail that I ever imagined anyone could ever get in their entire life or that ever existed. I just simply did not know that this type of thing was going on. And uh, they even attacked my wife and children for no reason at all other than they are who they are. <laughs> and so I thought, gee, I better find out who these people are really quick because they're dangerous. They want to destroy my children simply because they're not pure Aryan. Now that uh, made me very angry. And uh, makes a lot of other people angry also. They claim that they are the true Israelites. Now this is the strangest claim I've ever heard in my life, ladies and gentlemen. Because I've never met one of these people who speaks Hebrew, who actually celebrates the actual Hebrew holidays that the Israelites practiced. They can't read Hebrew. And uh, they mistranslate all the time. Of course, they mistranslate in their favor. <laughs> but nevertheless, they mistranslate all the time. They'll take somebody else's translation and twist the meaning to mean what they want it to mean because they don't really understand the original Hebrew. <clears throat> they are descendants of Northern Europeans. Now, this is really easy to research, folks. Anybody can do it. You can go back and research the records of the Roman Empire when they went into Northern Europe, when they met the Celts and the Picts and the Gauls, and the Teutonic tribes of Germany. These were not Hebrews, ladies and gentlemen. 
They were not the descendants of Hebrews at all. These were wild men. And I mean wild in every sense of the word. They went into battle stark naked, covered with clay. Uh, the Picts were famous for that. I could go on and on and on. They were steeped in nature worship. None of the original religious aspect of the Hebrews came into play with any of these tribes whatsoever. Another strange claim by these people, the British Israelites, is that they are the, the original progenitors, so to speak, the creators of civilization. Yet, in the Middle East, in Africa, and in Asia, there were great civilizations that existed long before these people ever even learned to put a loincloth on, much less become civilized. Their answer to that is that they descended from those Eastern and Middle Eastern civilizations and that they arrived in Northern Europe by some great circuitous route of migration. That doesn't wash either, ladies and gentlemen. If you study these people, you'll find that they most probably came, and I'm talking about the Northern European, uh, Europeans, they most probably according to scientists, but you can't really trust them either. You see, they say the American Indians came to North America across a land bridge from Siberia, and they're really Mongols <laughs> who, who uh, you know, changed over a period of time and became uh, North American uh, Indians. What we call Indians, they're not Indians at all, they're just North Americans. Um, but the American Indians say that that's not true. They have their own history. And they dispute that. And uh, modern science has a way of changing its story through the years anyway. But they say that the Northern Europeans actually migrated from India. Now, I've been to India several times in my life, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I haven't seen anybody in the country of India, even in the highest caste groups that resemble Northern Europeans. Sorry, but there just isn't anybody there uh, who has that kind of resemblance. The ancient Hebrews did not look like Northern Europeans either. Another claim made by these people is that Adam, <laughs> the father of the human race, and, and I can't understand why they make this, this sort of distinction, because Adam was the father of Seth and Cain. But they claim, claim, they claim, they claim Cain was not produced by a union between Adam and Eve, but by a union between Adam and, uh, excuse me, but uh, Eve and Satan. And they claim that uh, Cain was the offspring of that union between Eve and Satan. <clears throat> It's all baloney, folks. It's the biggest crock of baloney that anybody's ever spouted ever in history. One of their, uh, one of their uh, explanations of this is that the true son of Adam was white. And that Adam actually means blood in the cheeks. When you research that word, you'll find that that's not what it means at all. They claim that Cain was actually a dark-skinned child born of the union between Eve and Satan. You know, there is... <laughs> this, this it really gets wild, folks. It really does. And uh, when you research this name of Adam, you find that it means no such thing. It does not mean blood in the cheeks. And it comes from a long line of myths that existed long before the Bible was ever written, or the uh, Jews became a nation, or the Hebrews became a nation known as Israel. And uh, I'm just going to read to you a couple of short paragraphs from the Holy Grail by Malcolm uh, Godwin, who himself is a British Israelist, but he tells the truth. And so that's what we're interested in on this broadcast. He says, and I quote, So far we have examined the historical bloodlines 
but the blood which courses through the veins of the Grail myth carries with it the hint of something far more dangerous and powerful, like some dark magical ingredient which runs far deeper in ancient tunnels of the collective unconscious. We briefly glimpse the dark spring tides under the moon and the quickening of life. At the time when the Grail legends first appeared, it was generally accepted that the blood women spilled at the moon was responsible for new birth. They didn't know the biological functioning of the sexual organs or the process of the creation of a fetus in the womb. They had no idea at that time. So they believed that the blood woman, women spilled at the moon or their menstrual period was responsible for new birth. Here's what he says about that. Blood which was retained in the womb was believed to coagulate into a child. Even Aristotle claimed that human life is a coagulum of menstrual blood. While the Roman Pliny, author of the Encyclopedic Natural History, insisted that it formed the material substance of generation. This curious notion was still taught in European medical schools only 200 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Far earlier, the ancient Mesopotamian goddess Ninhursag was said to have created humankind out of clay mixed with her, quote, blood of life, end quote. The Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians borrowed this and similar creation myths to form their own. Now listen to this carefully. Remember, this person is a British Israelist. And he says, quote, Even the name Adam can be traced to the feminine Adama, A-D-A-M-A-H, meaning bloody clay. So there you have it. And when you trace it back yourself, you'll find the same thing. Does not mean blood in the cheeks. Never did mean blood in the cheeks. Cannot mean blood in the cheeks. <clears throat> now I'm going to give you the research of the executive Intelligence Review, and this report is dated November 14, 1997. This is one of the best research organizations in the world, as far as I'm concerned. I don't particularly subscribe to their politics, but I do have great respect for their research, because I've duplicated it in almost every instance. I don't research everything they research, and they don't research everything that I have researched. But when we both research the same thing, the results are identical, which means these people are looking for the truth as I am, and they're not trying to put something in there that's not there. They tell it like it is. And so tonight, I'm going to tell it like it is. So take note of this. Make notes. Remember... Listen to everyone, read everything, believe absolutely nothing unless you can prove it in your own research. Here we go. British Israelites and Empire. One of the most glaring examples of British intelligence-sponsored psychological warfare against the United States is the bizarre ideology called variously British Israelism or Christian Identity. Victims of this foreign-sponsored ideological virus can be found to hold key positions in the Patriot Movement and other movements which may be committed to the destruction of the American Republic. And all, not all Patriots are Christian identity or British Israelism. And I can assure you that British Israelism and Christian identity people who call themselves Patriots are not. They have no interest in restoring the Constitution for the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, they want to split this country, and they want the Northwest four states, the four states in the Northwest corner of the United States, as their own nation. So all of these people running around calling themselves patriots, who also believe in Christian identity or British Israelism, are liars. They are lying to all of us. 